You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox, Carl OS. That was the Jay Giles band, Looking for Love, from the album Full House. Humble Pie, Drugstore Cowboys. Beautiful. And then we're here, here with Jim McCarty from the Yardbirds. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good, thanks. So you just come over here? You're, you're doing a tour or you're just doing a few shows? Uh, we're doing a tour. Um, not not that many shows, but probably about 20 shows altogether. But we're having little breaks in between. So. And you're playing tonight at the, um, the Fonda? Yeah. On Hollywood Boulevard. Have yeah. you have you uh, have you been to America? Did the Yardbirds come to America a lot? Oh, a lot, yeah, yeah. We played uh, we played many tours. Yeah, you're the only one left. I'm the, I'm the only one in the band now. Yeah, <laughs> the only original one. Yes, the only original. I don't mean like you're a one man show. You have the bass drum in your <laughs> back. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> no, I need I, I need the good musicians. Yeah, yeah. So uh, have you have you been playing for a long time? With this band, that you got? Uh, we uh, the the band the lineup now has been together for three years, mm -hmm. and they're they're all Americans. Uh, I'm I'm the only British invasion person yeah. left now. A little bit, little invasion. <laughs> it's a little invasion. Yeah, well, but awesome. they're they're great. They're good, very good, good players. So you got to keep the name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no problem with that. I guess. If they're all dead, no one's stopping you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only one dead, but then there's, there's all the guitar players, you know. But they're all they're all doing their own thing now. They got no desire to, no, do yard birds. N not really, no. Um, Jimmy Page put out uh, uh, one of our old albums last year, an old one recorded in '68, uh, which we we were involved with. Chris and I were involved. Uh, Studio album. Uh, no, it was a live one live. at Anderson Theatre in, in New York. Oh. And it had never come out properly before, and he, he had the the tapes and re remixed it, remastered it. It's called Yardbird 68. But yeah. uh, I think he was quite proud of that, you know. Yeah. Just before Zeppelin. Yeah. Um, was Jeff back in it for 10 minutes? Yeah. He was, right? Yeah, probably the best. It was the best period. Was Ronnie Wood? No. No. No, no. He was he was close, but not not quite. He was in the rehearsal room next door. <laughs> well, he was in the bag with the birds. That's it. That's it. I knew yeah. there was something. Yeah, that was what you're thinking of. Yeah, yeah. So how did that... When you first started, do you remember when you started? Did you... Did, uh, I mean, Melody Maker ad adverts. What? How did you get together? Well, we were all we were all mates. We just we met in a school, a sort of sc partly school and partly local pub down in Kingston in Surrey. Um, what was the pub called? It was called the Crown. It was an old sort of bohemian place where all the art students went. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I I went to grammar school with Paul Samuel Smith, the bass player. And uh, the rest of them all went to Kingston Art School, mm. including Eric Clapton and Keith and Chris and and Top Topham, who was before Eric. Yeah. And they were all the art school people. And then uh, we just, you know, got together and we were all local guys, all like we heard blues R and B. We called it then. Yeah, that was the thing, right? Yeah, that was the thing we heard. All that. You know, Muddy Waters, Bo Diddley, all that stuff. And so this, uh, so this is pre-Beatles. No, be, so be, the Beatles have been going. Yeah, they've been just started. It was six, about sixty-three. Yeah, yeah, the Beatles had a couple of hits by then. So you you weren't inspired like because most bands when the Beatles come out, every record label wanted a band like the Beatles. Yeah, but you, we, you didn't want to go down that road. Well, we like the Beatles, but sure. but we like the we like the, the, the original blues. The blues stuff, the black blues coming yeah. coming out of the US. Yeah, and the the Stones were doing that sort of stuff as right. well. Right, and they used to play locally down in Richmond, so we we went to see them as well. And so that was your neck of the woods. Yeah, Kingston, yeah. Richmond. Yeah, King Eel Pie Island. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. It was actually. Uh, 
it was a it was a little island, right down, yeah. and yeah. where the river is not that wide, right? That's right. A little island. A few people lived there, and there was this old nineteen twenties sort of old dance hall there that um, they used to put on the gigs, and you used to have to pay a penny to go over the bridge, to, <laughs> like a toll. Bloody cheek, <laughs> penny. <laughs> um. Why was it called the Old Pie Island? Was there like a pie mash shop there or something? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. There must have been a reason, you know. Did they have any pie mash shops in there? Uh, uh, you know what? There was one in, in, was in Kingston a pie, or Richmond or Kingston, a pie mash shop. I went in it a few times. Oh, OK. On the high street in, in, in Kingston. Oh, yes. A very good yeah. pie mash shop. Yes. I don't know if it's still there. <laughs> it's all changed now, isn't it's it? It's all changed. There's a few pie mash shops. Yeah. Was you a fan of pie mash or not? I, I, I don't think I... You never had pie I, mash? I don't think I, I had it, no. Oh, come on. I should have had it. I probably, I probably did, actually. And you didn't know? I couldn't remember. You were tripping. You don't even remember. <laughs> I was out of my head. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Um, so you was, an art, you was all art students? Yeah, except Paul and I, we were at grammar school or high school. Or Just whatever. regular school? Yeah. Did you have any jobs? Like yeah. regular jobs? Yeah, I worked for the. Uh, I worked in a stockbroker's for a bit in the city. What did you do there? I was I was Running. doing like statistics and uh, you know doing uh, numbers, number, number crunching. <laughs> wow, how old was you then when you were doing that? I was about um, twenty, twenty-one. In Holborn, you said. In the in the city, yeah, yeah in London Wall, and. Uh, um, then, then we started the group, and um, I, I was going off working in the day and then getting the train out to the gigs, you know. But you'd obviously been playing drums for a while. Yeah, so yeah, I used to play at school when we um, when we used to have a school group playing all the old American Every Brothers and Buddy Holly and Johnny Cash, all that stuff. Yeah, so where did you practice in your mum's bedroom? <laughs> practice, yeah. Got on her nerves. Yeah. It's got to be the worst instrument to get on anyone's nerves, right? Drums. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you can't play. Well, we found a bass player in the school group that his parents didn't his parents didn't mind for some reason. Yeah. Maybe they were deaf. Maybe <laughs> they were deaf and they had an insulated house, maybe. Yeah. So how long did you last as far as the original band? Five years? Yeah, we, yeah five, we broke up in 68. Uh, formed in uh, 63 yeah. yeah yeah but it was hectic it was all uh, night after night playing and and you got i mean you had some good success right yeah was it like it wasn't did you do ready steady go and all yeah, that yeah. all that stuff yeah. what was your biggest song you think the, the biggest song was probably for your love yeah and uh, then we did heart full of soul and uh, still i'm sad we started to write our own yeah. shapes of things and yeah over under sideways down happenings 10 years time ago and then um uh it was the kiss of death we went to mickey most who was the big hit maker of the day and uh of course it all went wrong he had the, all the wrong songs <laughs> well he's total pop guy he ain't looking yeah for your yeah you, well, you never know and he would record a song, you'd, like in a day. He'd say, oh, well, they're back in tracks in the morning. Yeah, we'd get the other band to come and play <laughs> yeah, over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I know. I know that's real. <laughs> um, so, the movie, I've seen it a few times, Blow Out. Blow Up. Blow, that's what I said, Blow Up. You're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> That was that's a great movie and and there's uh what was that like doing that was it, was it a lot of hanging about or was it done real quick oh no no it's hanging about it took about five days to do that little bit really yeah and you did two songs if I remember right just the one just the one just the one song and it was uh You're getting it all wrong yeah it was all very odd because all the audience were told just to stand stand there and look glazed you know glazed eyes yeah don't do anything. He must have thought Antonio must have thought everyone was stoned. Yeah, and they they should just stand there. Not uh, usual gigs. They were jumping around. You know, sure. Everyone was having a good time. Well, it was kind of a, it's an arty farty movie. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Um, now, did you actually play 
or was you just miming? We we mimed. So you had you had the old uh, things over the drum kit. Yeah, we just mimed. <laughs> you had them pads on yeah, it and stuff. Yeah, horrible, difficult. Yeah, and that was that. It was a lot of hanging around because it was like a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And that was a that was like a, a reproduction of an old club. That was, set was it? It was, what? A, was a club called the Ricky Tick in Windsor, and. Uh, that was all reproduced for the set. Oh. Exactly, every last little bit of graffiti. And... No one knew the difference. <laughs> no, it was very weird. Oh. So did you write any? Was you in in on the songwriting for some of yeah, the songs? Yeah, I co-wrote some of the songs, um, Shapes of Things, over on the sideways down, happening ten years time ago, Still I'm Sad. So, yeah, I managed so to do that. So you get a bit of dosh still? Yeah, we... Yeah, because we had a few covers. We yeah. had uh, people like David Bowie. Right, and, Shapes of Things. Yeah. On pinups. Yeah. Anyone else cover it? Uh, Rod Stewart cut, didn't it? Didn't he? Yeah. Rod did with it. Jeff Beck. Rod with, with Jeff. The Truth, yeah. is it on the Truth album? Yeah. One of them albums. Uh, Rush did it. Yeah. Um, who else? Oh, there are a few. Yeah. There are a few. I think we should play it. Yeah. We're here with Jim McCarty. Am I saying it right? Yeah. I th is that Irish? Yeah, Irish. Yeah. <laughs> From the Yardbirds, they're playing tonight at the Fonda. Jonesy's Jukebox, Carla West. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox, Carla West. That was uh, the Yardbirds, For Your Love. And before that was the Yardbirds, Over, Under, Sideways, Down. And we are here with Mr. Yardbirds. How are you, buddy? Pretty Jim good. Ma Jim McCarty. Good. Original drummer. Still breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. <laughs> Playing tonight at the, um, the the Fonda. What time do you go on? Do you know? Uh, 8.30, I believe. Do you play for a long time? Just uh, about 90 minutes. Till you're knackered? Till I'm knackered. 90 minutes, perfect time. Yeah, that's good. Any longer than that, I'm bored, whoever it is. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's cool. Uh, what I was going to say, so you, I was talking to you earlier in your book about, like, you have a lot of pictures with the singer in it. What, yes. What was his name? Sorry. Keith, Keith Ralph. Keith Ralph. Yeah. And you said that he, he died when he was 30... Yeah, 33. 33. From electric shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In his house. Yeah, it was just an accident, very, very bizarre. He plugged his guitar into a, a an old Moog synthesizer and didn't plug it in the wall properly, you know, stuck it in with matchsticks or whatever. Matchsticks? <laughs> stuck the wires in with matchsticks. Wow. Instead of putting a plug on it. Oh, he did it like that? Yeah. Oh, man. And then uh, who told he, him that trick? <laughs> and then he got a belt, and um, he died. I didn't. I mean, you, you can survive a belt out of a a, a, a wall, though, can't you? Yeah, I think you can. You can survive it, but he, you know, he was a bit weak, weak constitution, I guess. Yeah. Interesting. It's very, very rare. Very strange. Yeah. Well, I don't think. They make matchsticks anymore, so I don't think you have to worry about that. <laughs> no, not those. <laughs> not the old Swan Vesta. <laughs> well, everything comes with a plug on now, doesn't it? So yeah. you don't have to put your own plug on. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> um, so your book's out. You did it yourself. You wrote it all yourself. Well, with the help of uh, the go um, Dave Thompson. The, the ghost. Yeah. Ghost the go writer. Yeah. And uh, was it hard to, uh, with introductions by Jimmy Page, was it hard to, uh, did you remember it? Was it hard to remember a lot well, of stuff? Well, I, re I remember, I did remember a lot of stories anyway, because I'm, I'm used to doing interviews, and talking about the old days. And and uh, it was fun remembering funny stories. And then, of course, you forget all the funny ones that, you know, you forget some and that doesn't go in. It's like, oh, I, put, I remember that now and that. I forgot to put that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it was good. It was a good laugh to do. Yeah. And you're still playing. 
you're still doing it. Yeah, I still enjoy it for mm. some reason. Probably you, the repertoire, the songs, you know, the songs are all good. You look good, you're not heavy or nothing. What, what do you eat? What's your secret? Well, I'm a vegetarian. Yeah. Um, and I just look after myself and make sure I, you know, I don't overdo anything, I guess. I don't smoke. And I don't, you know, I don't take drugs and drink very much, so. Um, how long have you been a vegetarian? About, about 20 years. Wow. What made you do that? What made you decide? I don't know, I just sort of... Moral thing, or just you just wanted to put not... I think it was it was a bit of, a bit of bit both. Of both. A bit of both. Yeah. I've been, I've been, uh... I've been dabbling. Yeah. With the uh, veggies. I don't like eating a lot of, of meat and stuff. Yeah. Especially the, these days. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's... Yeah, I don't think eating cows is very, very good. I think you get, I think it gives you cancer, to be honest with you. And, yeah. chi and chickens. Yeah, and chicken too. Honestly, I don't think, uh, because there's so many people in the world, I just don't think you can uh, um, sustain it. No. Without just mass producing them. Yeah. You know, and, and it's weird. I, I, I mean, it's kind of cruel. It's cruel what as well. happens to cows and, and it's cruel too, isn't it? It really is, and but there's a dis. Um, I'm sure I'm upsetting a bunch of people now, but I don't care. But there's a kind of a disconnect, like even women who are more sensitive and stuff. Yes. You know, they know what happens, but they still. Eat you don't it. think about it you when, don't you, think when it, you when it's on the plate. <laughs> when it's on the plate, it doesn't look like a cow. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? No, exactly. But um, I don't know. In my old age, I've got a bit soft, and uh, just my my gut tells me, and my mind tells me it, it's not it's not good vibes. Yeah. Not good vibes. Yeah. It's kind of dark, actually. Yeah. You know the way the way c cattle are, are slaughtered. And yeah, I, gr I agree with you totally. Sitting in toilet all day long and just I don't think cows are. The, everyone's like ah, oh, but they're just docile. I don't think they are. They're just as smart as dogs. Yeah. They're just bigger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think they're uh, any less, but that's me. What am I going to do? But that's good. That's, that's, so that's your secret. That's why you look slender and Well, and I guess fit. that helps. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have, like, a bit of milk and cheese? Yeah, so, yeah, some, some of that. Yeah. You're, you're cruel. Yeah, some of that. <laughs> <laughs> I like goat cheese. Yeah, goat, yeah, I, I, I prefer goat's cheese. There's a lot of goat in uh in France, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice goat's cheese is there. Yeah. Duck eggs? Sometimes. I love Sometimes. duck eggs. Man. Yeah. They're the best. Yeah. Hard to get. Whole Foods has them. Yes. But they're hard to get hold of. Um, Well, this is good conversation. Very nice. I, I like it, man. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. Should we play some more music? What we got? Oh, we're going to play... um. Oh, yeah, it was hiding under this piece. Hi-ho, Silver Lining by Jeff Beck. And we're here with my man, Jim McCarthy. You know, it sounds like an Irishman saying McCarthy. Jim <laughs> McCarthy. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah, it does. Um, take it away, son. <laughs> You've been listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Cal OS. That was the Ramones. Baby, I love you. That was produced by Phil Spector. I don't know if you noticed, but there's no guitar on that track. And uh, before that was, uh, that was from the album End of the Century, I believe. Uh, before that was the Beach Boys, Vegetables, dedicated to my guest, <laughs> Jim McCarty, drummer extraordinaire from the Yardbirds. And before that, we had Jeff Beck, Hi Ho Silver Lining, that was produced by Mickey Most. Yeah. The honest Mickey Most. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> uh, he, he, you said that one. He did, he, did you say that on the air? That he was, um, you produced with him and it all went wrong? Yeah, it did. Because he had the, all the wrong material for us. Mm -hmm. All the wrong, too poppy, too yeah. poppy sort of songs. Yeah. But he did have a lot of success with a lot of glam bands. Who prob yeah. Who probably didn't see Adina. And the the animals, he did the House of the Rising Sun. Mickey Mouse did? Yeah, he he did that in about uh, 
I think he did that in a day. He it did, cost he, forty-five quid to do that. Wow, and that was a that was a, that's a, a that goes under classic. Yeah, classic. Who wrote it? Was that an old old uh, song? Yeah, it was an old blues song, right? Yeah, cl- classic old blues song. Yeah. Um, so what else you been doing? Yeah, I I I've just finished a new recording of a solo recording where I where I sing sort of singer songwriter style. It's called Walking in the Wildland. So uh, that that that's on the market now. So you sing as well then? Yeah, I like to sing. Yeah. Yeah, I I can't really sing rock and roll, but I can sing like it, you know, f- folkier, more folky things. Like who you sound like? Uh, Bob Dylan. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know who I sound like, but more more in that sort of you know middle of the road folky thing, different middle of the road folky thing. I can't I can't describe that. They call it psychedelic folk, which is really odd. Yeah, that is That's a weird a very one. strange title. Who come up with that? You? Uh, no, somebody else. I don't know. Some writer somewhere. <laughs> well, listen, man. It was nice of you to come by. Thank you very much. Good luck tonight at the um, Fonda, on Hollywood Boulevard, going about 8.30. Um, we have a winner for the whistle. His name was R- R- Riley Mahone. Well done, Riley. The song I was whistling was Perfect Day by Lou Reed. Mr. Shovel's got something. Yeah, this portion of Jonesy's Jukebox is brought to you by Dell. And right now, KLOS wants to give you cash, gas, and grass. We'll take caller 25 at 800-955-KLOS. You win lawn tickets to the Revolution 3 Tour with Bush, Stone Temple Pilots, and The Cult at Glen Helen Amphitheater September 1st. And you get in the running for $500 cash at 530 with Gary. That's that. We're out of here. We'll be back tomorrow at 12 Bells. As yet, we got no guesting, but I'm trying to get someone, but it might not happen. We'll find out tomorrow. See you later.